Jim Snell in the USA with TRS. This video is about the water pump. The water pump is located on the right side of the engine in the forward part. This small bolt here circled in red is the drain for the entire cooling system. You might find it drains easier if you open the top radiator cap to allow air to come in there. This is what the cover looks like for the water pump. And that's the plastic water pump impeller that moves the water through the cooling system. Typically you can just grasp the gear on the back side and, and just unscrew the impeller. It comes off counterclockwise. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. And if it's giving you problems getting it off with your hand, there is a hex head to the center of it design. And you can use a 12 millimeter socket. And you can see clearly here that that's got a hex in the center of it. Or you can use a, a deep well box end wrench. Here I show the where the seal is and, and the polished part of the shaft that the seal rides on. On the back side is the drive gear, also resin. has a small circlip that holds it onto the shaft. This is a top view of the, of the gear. So to take that apart, you just, of course, using your circlip pliers, remove that little clip. Be very careful it doesn't fly and you lose it. Be very careful you don't open it so much that you damage it or replace it when you're working on the water pump. The back side of the gear has a slot in it that falls into a small pin that goes through the shaft. I show here the easy way to get that pin out, coax it out with a little pair of pliers and and then grip it and just gently pulling on it, it should come right out of there. You may be able to remove the water pump shaft just by pressing on it with your hand, but I have a small bronze hammer here, a tiny one, I call it my pecking hammer. Doesn't really make much force, just coaxing it, won't damage it. Then when it's almost out, I can put a drift down in there and give it a couple taps with the pecking hammer and the shaft comes right out. That's what it looks like. The polished area there is where the seals are. Then finally there's this bearing on the inside. It's open bearing so that it can get fully lubricated by the gearbox oil. You can, using a large socket, you can take a drift and again the tiny pecking hammer. I just give it a couple of little taps and it comes right out. It's a very mild interference the bearing is into the case piece. And, and there are different machine ridges and you can really not mess this up. It's very straightforward design. There's a small hole between the two seals and if one of the seals goes bad then the liquid that's in that system will bleed out through the small little opening on the bottom of the case. So if you have a water pump seal goes bad you're going to be dripping a little water there or if it's the oil side it'll be a little gearbox oil. The two seals are the same. They have a spring side and a wiper lip side. The spring always faces pressure or faces the, the liquid. So the spring faces the impeller and the spring faces the gear. Or you just make sure that the springs are facing out and out from each side of the cover. And the gear and the impeller just are the first things above each seal. The inner seal drops down in there. You can't put it in wrong other than having it reversed. But following that is a, a little bit of a larger step in there. And that's where the bearing goes. I'm going to show you here that the difference between the machining, I'll point out. You can see here, if you look closely, a larger area on top that's because the bearing has a larger outside diameter than the seal so the seal goes down in there first and seats against an inner center lip to seat both seals and then the bearing goes in there and then these are all the components of the water pump it's a very straightforward and very well proven design thank you for watching my videos 